fear nobody. Do me like Jesus. Genesis chapter 3, we don't intend to bother you long at all. Genesis chapter 3, commencing at verse 1, the New International Version delineates these words. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or else you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. Mm -hmm. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Mm -hmm. We preached from this text the other week. Um, and on that particular week, um, we preached fact check. How I wish Adam and Eve would have went back and fact check with God before listening to the serpent. This particular week, we want to look at this text we want to preach from the subject, don't miss out on a good thing. Don't miss out on a good thing. Don't miss out on a good thing. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. And dear Lord, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. And Lord, let my will be lost in thine. Dear Lord, help me preach. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, junior ushers. Let's give our junior ushers a big hand. Don't miss out on a good thing. Beloved hearts, in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent convinces the first humans to concentrate on the one tree that the two could not have and to not celebrate the numerous other trees that the two could have. In Genesis chapter two, God makes multiple trees for Adam and Eve to eat from, but God commands them to not eat from the one tree in the center of the Garden of Eden. God creates multiple trees that the two could eat from, the tree of life, pear trees, apple trees, fruit trees, other trees, whatever trees you can think of. But God commands them to not eat from the one tree that's in the center of the Garden of Eden. But in this chapter, the serpent, who is more shrewd and craftier than the other animals and the beast of the field, convinced the first humans to refocus their attention from the numerous trees the two could have and to instead focus their attention onto the one tree they could not have. The serpent convinces the two to refocus their attention from what the two had to what the two did not have. And I'm convinced that one of Satan's main tactics is to convince the people of God to concentrate so much on what we do not have that we miss out on what we do have. I'm convinced that one of Satan's main tactics is to convince God's people to focus our attention on to what someone else has instead of what we have. For example, some of us will bleach our skin, dye our hair, wear blue contacts, support positions and policies that are opposite our own self-interest. I'm sorry if you got blonde uh, dyed hair today and blue contacts and all that, but there's some of us who will even reject our own culture because we want what some other culture has. But what we don't realize is that we're the people who invented mathematics and science. We're the people who created the first educational institutions in the world 
world? Where are the people who created the first calendars and the first numerical systems? Where are the people who developed jazz and R&B, rock and roll, gospel, blues, hip-hop, bebop, go-go, spirituals, and funk? Where are the salt of this earth? Where are the soul of this world? Where are the ones that they're trying to bleach their skin to be like? Where are the ones who built this nation? Uh, some people will do all in their power to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, but what we don't realize is that the Joneses have more credit card debt and unpaid taxes and school loans uh, and other bills stacked onto other bills that most of us cannot afford. Uh, because one of Satan's main tactics uh, is to convince God's people to focus our attention onto what someone else has uh, and not realize uh, what we have already. Uh, and can I just tell someone up in this room what I used to hear the old folks say all the time? Sometimes the grass is not greener uh, on the other side. God creates multiple trees for the first humans to eat from, but cautions them to not eat from the one tree in the center of the Garden of Eden. But because the first humans concentrate on the one tree they were told not to eat from, the two eat the forbidden fruit and they end up losing paradise. And in the same manner, I've discovered that whenever we covet what other people have, we offer to lose uh, what we already have. Uh, in 2007, Tyler Perry released a movie entitled, Why Did I Get Married? Anybody ever see this movie? Why did I get married? In this particular movie, four couples plus one other woman, woman travels to Colorado for their annual couples retreat. But while at the retreat, some secrets are exposed. Moves shift and relationships are pushed uh, to their boundaries. Uh, for example, we learn that the other woman on the retreat is a brother named Mike's mistress, uh, which is not a surprise since he made his wife Sheila drive to the retreat while he flies there with this other woman. Uh, and later on in the movie, Mike asks for a divorce uh, from his wife. Uh, but after Mike and Sheila divorce, Mike soon realizes that the woman he chased after doesn't measure up to the woman that he was married to. Uh, matter of fact, Mike realizes that he chased after someone who just provided 20% of his needs uh, compared to his ex-wife uh, who provided 80% of his needs, uh, which is called the 80-20 rule. Uh, because Mike chased after what Mike did not have, Mike lost uh, what he did have. Uh, I mean, he lost a wife who loved and respected him. He lost a wife who believed in him and made him a better man. He lost a wife who worked hard and was compassionate towards him. He lost a wife who was the essence of a Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, because he chased after what he did not have, uh, he ended up losing uh, what he did have. Uh, and I just simply stopped by to tell somebody in this room uh, that when we chase after what other people have, uh, we often lose uh, what we already have. Uh, when we chase after what God ain't never told us to go after uh, we lose uh, what we already have uh, yeah we lose our relationships we lose our culture uh, we lose our institutions uh, we lose our dreams and our visions uh, we lose our purpose we lose our passions uh, we lose our self-respect uh, we lose our self-worth uh, and we even lose uh, ourselves uh, when we chase after what someone else has uh, we lose uh, what we already have. Well, I'm about to take my seat. I'm about to sit down. I promise you in less than three minutes, but I just need to tell someone in this room before I take my seat to learn how to celebrate what you already have. I just need to tell someone up in this room today that what God has for you, it is for you. I just need to tell somebody 
uh, to learn how to count your blessings uh, and name them uh, one by one. Uh, yeah, Johnson Oatman once said uh, that when you look at others uh, with their lands and gold, uh, think that Christ has promised you uh, his wealth untold. Uh, count your many blessings uh, that money cannot buy. Uh, your reward in heaven uh, nor your home on high. Uh, count your blessings. Uh, name them one by one. Uh, count your many blessings uh, and see what the Lord has done. Uh, count your many blessings. Uh, name them one by one. Uh, and is there anybody up in here uh, that can just declare uh, that I am blessed. Uh, I might not be rich, uh, but I'm blessed. Uh, I might not have the finest house, uh, but I'm blessed. Uh, I might not have red bottoms, uh, but I'm blessed. Uh, I got food on the table. Uh, I got clothes on my back. Uh, I got a roof over my head. Uh, I got friends that love me. Uh, I got a savior that died for me. I am blessed. Uh, is there any blessed people? Uh, in the house, is there any blessed people in the house? You ought to clap your hands. You ought to open up your mouth. You ought to say, thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my coming. I'm blessed in my going. I am blessed. Come on, stand up on your feet and bless the name of the Lord our God. Come on, if you're blessed, you ought to bless his name. So don't miss out on a good thing because you're looking at something else. Come on, put your hands together and bless his name. said I've learned the secret whether in plenty or in lack he said the secret to my contentment is this I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me Thank you, Lord. then later on our foreparents started to say it like this they said as long as I got King Jesus I don't need nobody else. And if you have Jesus, I'm telling you, you got everything that you need. Jesus makes the difference in our life. So if you're here and you don't have a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ,